One Sunday morning, nine-year-old boy was in the kitchen with his mom. His mom had finished making breakfast, and she said, go get your dad. He was a pastor. He had a study downstairs in the basement. So the son went down to the basement, and in that basement, there were no cell phones, no televisions, no phone, no radio, no windows, just books, an easy chair, a desk, and a rug. And as the son began to get down to the door, he could hear his dad speaking or talking. And he thought, that's interesting, I wonder what's going on. And he got to the, and he opened the door just slightly and looked in. There was his dad on his knees with a Hebrew prayer shawl over his head and over his back. And he was kneeling and praying. He happened to be praying at that moment for the nine-year-old son who stood by the door for a few moments and then quietly <laughs> went back upstairs, told his mom, you know, dad's down there praying. I don't think we better interrupt him. <laughs> and she said, no, when he's hungry, when he's done, he'll be up. The father that was on his knees praying was Eugene Peterson, the prolific writer of many books several of them for, pa for pastors. He was also the translator, transliterator of the Message Bible. A wonderful man died a few years ago. But the picture of, that many of you and I in this room have, of parents who are praying for us. Honestly, I don't know how some of our parents in their age got on their knees. Amen. I'm at the age, if I get on my knees, I got to call 911 to help me up. <laughs> but they prayed wonderful prayers, wonderful prayers. I want to talk about prayer for 2023. Last month, the Lord began to move on my heart that I the one thing I needed to do this next year was to fine-tune uh, my prayer life. I have a passage if you will find on the second handout that's on the other side of the songs. Prayer and Word Challenge 2023. James chapter 5 verse 16. B, that's the middle of the verse. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails him much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. I've been reading a book recently called Work Deep or deep work. Been very convicting. It's a book how we have been so affected in the age of technology that most of us only do shallow work. We just got through singing sweet hour of prayer. I don't know how many of you have difficulty spending an entire hour in prayer. I tend to do, I tend to burn out after 10 minutes. So when I pray for my family, I'll name a couple of names, or I pray for the missionaries, or pray, but I do it in wide sweeping terms. Lord bless the church, bless my wife, bless my kids, bring healing, da da da, but about 10 minutes I'm, I, I'm done praying, I got nothing more to pray about. I already burned out. Sweet hour of prayer. The heart of 
or the sentiment of that is so powerful. People I've known in my life that have done deep work. Now let me tell you about, sh about shallow work. Shallow work is when I'm studying or reading. I, have, I may have the television on in the background, but my phone is on. And I have to admit and confess I'm addicted to the phone. Every time it beeps, I have to see who's beeping. And many times it's some of you who are beeping. And I check my mail. Every time the mail comes, I, I never have more than four unread emails in my email box. You know, on the iPhone, it shows up. If you have a bunch of messages, it'll say five or six messages. I never let it get past one or two. Some of you that text me can verify this because when you text me, like Deborah texted me last night, and I text her back within 10 minutes. Gus texts me, I text him back in five minutes. I text Pastor Darrell, he takes three days to text back. <laughs> No, I'm serious. Most of the time it's because you forgot to turn his phone on. But, so when you text me, I text right back. But that is such an interruption. If I'm in the middle of prayer and I'm in the middle of study, I cannot get deep into the word or deep into prayer if I'm going to answer my phone, answer text, have the TV on, be distracted by all the other things in life. That's shallow work. If you're going to go deep in prayer and deep with God, you have to dial down the distractions. Now, that won't affect all of you, but it may affect some of you. I encourage you to do like I've been doing when I go to prayer or I go to study. I turn my phone off. Amen. A sacrilegious thing to do. I turn that, I don't even put it on silent. I turn it off. Nobody's getting through. See, if I put it on silent, the people that are on my VIP lists can still get through. So I virtually turn the phone off. Nobody's getting through. I want to hear from God. So Elijah's example, letter B on your handout. Elijah prayed with passion and specificity. David Gibbs, I don't know if you've watched any of his messages on YouTube. He's a rather famous attorney. He's a Southern Baptist. Boy, he's a great preacher. He said, show me your prayer list and I'll tell you your passion for prayer. How many know who Bill Robertson is? Bill was a wonderful guy, superintendent here of uh, Southern California District, uh, married to Jeanette. They were part of our church near the end of his life. And uh, I had a great time fellowshipping with Bill. And one day I was in his room, uh, we were praying together about something and he had a big stack of papers there and he pulls out one pa paper and he says, look at this. And he pointed down, it was my name on that paper. I said, that's cool, what's that? He said, well, that's all the pastors I pray for every week, sometimes every day. Must have been 200 pastors. Missionary lists. And he just didn't go by name. He was so acquainted with them that he was specific in his prayer. When somebody prays for you, it's great when they do it with specificity. They know what your needs are. For the last year, every Sunday morning, I get a text from my son. And he says, Dad, I'm praying for you. Says a few other things. I usually get a text from Jim Grahams that he's praying for me. 
it does pass does my heart good that people are praying for me I know there's a lot more than just those two but when people pray for you you like to hear it with specificity so I said well uh, brother Robertson give me an example so here's a list of 100 pastors, and he starts praying for the one at the top. 45 minutes later, he was done with the one at the top. I was shocked. He prayed for the guy's back, his preaching, this, that. I mean, and he, he prayed for the gifts of the Spirit over him, bless him. With it. I mean, on and on and on. I'm going to have my lovely wife come up and share about the power of making lists and how God uses them. Come on. Blessings to each and every one of you. I have to do that so I can see you. <laughs> there you all are. Oh, I love you so much. Jesus loves you so much more. That's a given. You know, I don't feel like I'm the person to talk about this, but there, I'm a learner. I continue learning, and God shows me he was so good when we were younger to really help us out one time. We were at a point, we were a young family. I had our little boy, and we didn't have any food in the house, other than maybe cornmeal and things like that. But we had come to a point where we really, everything was pretty much gone to eat and we had no money to pay for any food. So, oh ye of a little faith, I did not make a grocery list at that point. And I was really troubled in my spirit and then the Lord spoke to me, and he said, Judy, I want you to write down a grocery list. Well, gosh, I couldn't argue with God. I knew all the reasons why I hadn't. But since he asked me to, that meant everything. So I sat down, and I wrote out that grocery list. And I thank God so much for doing that for me, to telling me to do that. I didn't understand that something was about to happen. But I thanked him for that. And I felt a relaxation in my spirit over that matter. I thought something, it's this, all things work together for good, do they not? For all who are called according to his purposes. And there's another scripture that says, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So there the, the uh, list was in the kitchen. And a couple hours later, the doorbell rang. And a, man, a guy we know, one of our brothers in Christ in the ministry we were in, he was holding two big bags of groceries. He says, you know, I feel so silly coming here. You know, when God asks you to do something, sometimes you feel kind of silly because you, you don't know the whole story behind why. And that's okay. We don't need to know. So anyway, oh, I, I beckoned him to come in, and I was so glad to see him, and I was, I was, I looked at that, I was just amazed that he had caused this man to go to the store and buy groceries for us. And he brought them over to our home. We were so blessed. He stayed for a little while and we talked. And after a little while, he left. And the Holy Spirit said, Judy, I want you to cross off your list the groceries you now have. So I crossed the ones off that he had brought me. He had brought me through this wonderful man. 
So I saw, well, there's half of them are, li are left, but that's okay. We got half of those groceries. That's marvelous. That's a miracle. That is a miracle. And so more time went by, perhaps another hour, and there was another knock at the door. And this time it was my best girlfriend. I had known her from junior high school. And she was holding bags of groceries. And I invited her in with enthusiasm, and I loved her so much. We love each other, still do today, talk all the time. So we unpacked the groceries. I told her what had happened so far. And after she had, we had had a wonderful time of fellowship, and after she left, the Holy Spirit said, Judy, I want you to mark off those groceries that you have now received. And so I did, and guess what? There was not one grocery item left on that list. God had completely filled it. He had completely brought people to my house. I didn't have to go to the store to get it. It was just the most amazing thing, and I thank God today. Every time I think of it, I thank God again because he shall supply our needs according to his riches in glory. Sometimes it takes a while, but he follows through, and I believe him because he says so. And I want to thank you for listening to this. It was a wonderful moment in our lives when we were younger. Thank you. How would you like it, the prayer list that you make, and God says, you know what? As soon as that's answered, cross that off. And in a matter of time, your entire prayer list, grocery list, all of those have been made. I look around this room and I see some people who have been involved in powerful prayer. Charla and the ministry, many of you pastors and missionaries. And I confess to you, um, I've not been that person of prayer. So convicted as I worked on this passage and looking at Elijah's life that I started this last month making lists in a notebook, one page per family member, of specific prayer requests. Now remember, God told Judy to write down specific, what if she'd only wrote, written down bananas and apples? That's all she would have got. Matter of fact, as I look back on it, she should have made about 20 pages of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, enough groceries for two months. Because <laughs> I think God would have brought all of those. You receive not because you ask not. Ask and you shall receive. We get lazy in all of this because we have some unanswered prayer times and we sort of give up on stuff. God does not give up. So I have between 20 and 25 specific items for each of my children and grandchildren. On one page here, one page there, one there. and I'm working through the rest of my extended family. And I'm going to spend time praying through that list. There's another brother that's in the room today. He and I begin to pray over a couple of family members that we both, not in the same family, but praying for them. God's done a wonderful work in the two people we are praying for. When you speak out a prayer, when you work off of a list, I provided the uh, list of our missionaries. The problem with that list, we don't know too much about these people. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to provide for you an email address or a mailing address so you can get the newsletter for each one of the missionaries. 
You can pray with specificity. Victoria is coming home soon. Lots of issues in her life we need to pray for. Specificity. I don't want somebody to just pray, oh, oh bless Mike. I want somebody to pray, fill him with the Holy Spirit. Turn him on fire. Give him strength. You know, I could get, ask me, I'll give you 30 things to pray for me for. <laughs> Praying with power and specificity. Elijah was right with God. If you notice the passage, it says that effective prayer of a righteous man. I don't know, does God hear the unrighteous? I'm sure he does, but does he answer them? I don't know. I think he answers the prayer of the righteous. I know that. Look at number three. <laughs> Under Elijah's example, I'll close with this. Elijah's perseverance. Elijah prayed once and the rain stopped. He prayed once and the fire came down. Remember on the altar of Baal. But it took seven times of prayer for the rain to start again. So here's Elijah, prays once, the rain stops, challenges the prophets of Baal, prays once, fire comes down. Now he's going to pray for the rain to start again. And if you know the story from Kings, 1 Kings, you know, he sends his servant out. Do you see anything? No. Sends him out again. Do you see anything? No. Sometimes we give up too easily in our prayer. We give up too easily. I have Dor Doris Derby's name there. I have to make another confession. Just before COVID, I don't know how it happened. The prayer project that God put on my heart 20 years ago. I have it here. Probably 8,000 names of most of the people in our congregation over the last 20 years. Alma Nelson, she had 96 relatives. 96 kids and grandkids. She had 11 kids that they all had 20 kids. <laughs> and a lot of kids. And my promise was that as long as I was pastor, once they passed away, I'd continue on with the, with the prayer for their family. I've let them down this last couple of years. I do pull this out once a week or so and pray over it, but I haven't been bringing it to church. I'm going to bring it once a month so we can, and I'm going to provide the, the blank paper for you to list your family on. Alpha Flynn, some of you have heard that story. She passed away over there on T number one, course two. Put her ball on the ground, back swing, and she fell over her ball. Three weeks before she died, she said, Pastor, if I die, I want to do it on the golf course. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> she had a big family. She had one son who... Uh, she was at the top of her prayer list. She had about 100 people on her prayer list. And um, so he went to do her funeral. And the son came up to me during the funeral at the end, rather, and he said, oh, I'm so thankful that, that I, I'm, I'm done with my, my grandmother or my, my mother's prayer for me. She won't be praying for me anymore. So I had... Alpha's prayer list with me that morning so I pulled it out and I put it in front of his face and I see this is your mother's prayer list guess who's at the very top it was him he was at the very top and I said I promised your mom that when she died I'd pray for you like she prayed for you he goes oh brother <laughs> Doris Derby, I have her on the handout, actually. I can talk about these people because they're all in heaven. <laughs> and Doris, Doris and I had a hermeneutical disagreement over a passage of Scripture. 
she couldn't claim the Philippian jailer that his whole family would be saved. Well, being the Bible scholar that I am, and the Greek scholar that I am, I was quick to point out that that's not what that passage says. And, and she said to me, well, that's what it says to me. I'm claiming my, my whole family to God. I finally gave up and gave in and said, you know what? Maybe that's what the passage says after all. At her funeral, all of that family together, there were only two that weren't saved. A lot of these families I stayed in touch with over the years and somebody comes to the Lord and somebody calls me and says, hey, guess what? So-and-so finally came to the Lord. We never give up on prayer. We persevere. There are people in this room I know who have prayed for loved ones years and years and years and years. David Gibbs, I'll share one of his stories and now I'll close. He was at a service and this guy comes forward at the end of the service, he's all disheveled, looked like he was living on the street. Just a mess. Came forward to receive the Lord. Church went wild, people are jumping up and down, praising God. These are old ladies waving handkerchiefs in the air. <laughs> and uh, so he goes on and on about how the congregation was going crazy. So David says to the pastor, he says, boy, that guy must have really been bad. He says, no, not, that's not why they're praising God. He said, you see that little woman sitting over there in the fourth row with the white hat on? That's her son. She's been praying for him for 30 years. That's why they're praying, jumping up and down, and so excited. Somebody came to the Lord because somebody did not give up on prayer. I encourage you to make a few lists this year. I'll bring this topic up from time to time. I'll bring the prayer list on a regular basis. Let's take a moment and go to prayer before we close. where you are right now, think of one or two people who you love and who you've been praying for. I have a commitment on the bottom of the page. It says, Dear Lord, my desire in 2023 is to spend deep work in your word and in prayer. I commit to reading your word every day and going to your throne room for prayer. I'll make specific prayer lists and pray for them daily until I see your answer. Lord, we commit to never give up on prayer. Never give up on prayer. Come upon us with a spirit of love and passion. Let us pray fervently as Elijah did. We pray for our families, Lord, our sons and daughters, grandsons, granddaughters, all of our family members, that you would protect them, you'd baptize them in the Holy Spirit, you'd bring them to you in salvation for those that aren't saved. You bring healing into their, their bodies, faith, into their heart. Give them power against sin. Meet all of their needs, their financial resources. Heal them all of all the hurts and pain they've received in their life. Let your spirit wash over them like a cool spring of fresh water. And Lord, I pray for these thousands of names from our prayer list going back 20, 25 years ago. And pray that, Lord, that you would touch each person in, the, in these lists. Bring your healing, your hope, your salvation. 
I pray for those in our congregation that have gone before us so faithful in you. I think of Doris and Alpha, so many others, Lord. Faithful men and women of God, let our legacy be a legacy of prayer. Let 2023 be like Judy's grocery list. Lord, let our lists be long with all the things that we need, that we desire in you. And the Lord, Lord, surprise us with a knock at the door and say, hey, here's the answer. I'll bring it today. I bring it today, and I can cross that off my list. Amen. Let's sing Sweet Hour of Prayer again. Sweet hour.